mud gas separator. Now this is called vent line, which is used to vent out the gas, which is extracted from the mud. Now we have got uh, height of vent line, which is uh, called as H3. And this is uh, ID of the vent line, D3. Now this, is, this point is connected to mud inlet, and this is connected to the choke. So whatever fluid that comes out of the choke will come into the system. This is the main body, a deep tube called as H2, and the output of the mud gas separator or discharge of the mud gas separator is connected to shaker. Let's understand the working of MGS. As we know that uh, MGS is connected to choke manifold, so whatever fluid that comes out of the choke will come into the MGS. Now gas and mud comes into the MG system and mud being heavy, so it will settle down and it will pass through the deep tube and it will go to shell shaker. And the gas which is being lighter and this system is used generally for free gas. So gas being lighter, so it will evolve and it will pass through the vent line. And the gauge is mounted on MGS to monitor internal pressure of MGS. Whenever internal pressure of MGS exceeds working pressure of MGS, then the gas will enter into shell shaker area. And we never want gas at shell shaker area because our crew is working there. Now let us understand on what dimension back pressure, build up pressure or internal pressure, I can say the gauge pressure in short, gauge pressure depends. Now if I reduce ID of vent line, as you can see, so let, let us understand that if ID is reduced, then the gauge pressure will increase. Now, if I increase the height of vent line, then also gauge pressure increase. That means build up pressure, internal pressure or back pressure of MGS or vessel depends on height of vent line and ID of vent line. Now let's understand if deep tube height is given 20 feet, and mud weight is given as 16 ppg. So uh, we can understand that the pressure exerted or pressure build up in the MGS is 9 psi. So 9 psi will be acting at this point, will be acting at this point, will be acting at this point, and it will be acting at this point also. So when gas is acting at bottom of the vessel, then why gas is not penetrating the deep tube and it is going to shell shaker? The reason behind is something is stopping the gas to penetrate this deep tube. Now the pressure in the gauge 9 PSI can be understood this way that the pressure exerted by the gas to pass through vent line is 9 PSI. But to penetrate through this deep tube, it might be more. So what is stopping this gas to penetrate or pass through this deep tube? It's the hydrostatic pressure build up in the deep tube. Now we have a calculation for hydrostatic pressure. So mud weight into constant into deep tube height, which gives me 16.6 PSI. So the build up pressure in this deep tube due to mud, which is in hydrostatic pressure is 16.6 PSI. Now, if I have 9 PSI at bottom or 9 PSI in the system, then it fails to penetrate and the system will work and vent line and gas will pass through the vent line. But if the pressure in the vessel becomes 17 PSI, so this means that to pass through vent line, gas has to exert a pressure of 17 PSI. But to pass through deep tube, gas has to exert a pressure of 16.6. So gas will start penetrating downwards and it will breach the deep tube and eventually the gas will come to shell shaker. So this means that working pressure, maximum allowable pressure and the blow through pressure depends on the hydrostatic pressure in the deep tube and hydrostatic pressure depends on height of deep tube and the mud weight of the deep tube. So in short, uh, back pressure depends or gauge pressure depends on ID of vent line and height of vent line. Whereas the working pressure, maximum allowable pressure or blow through pressure depends on 
deep tube height and hydrostatic pressure of deep tube. If influx change to oil, gas and condensate, then we, let us understand what will happen to the buildup pressure of MGS. Now since along with gas, other liquids are also coming like uh, influx are, are coming, oil and condensate. So the percentage of gas in the system will decrease. So this decrease in percentage will cause reduction in the buildup pressure because all the pressure that is built up in the MGS system is because of gas. And if gas percentage decrease, that will cause decrease in the pressure of MGS. So this means that if uh, gas influx changes or if influx changes from gas to gas and oil and condensate, then the buildup pressure will decrease. Now let us understand working pressure of MGS if influx change to oil, gas and condensate. Now if influx gradient given is 0.6 psi per feet, then the pressure buildup in deep tube can be calculated as 20 feet is the height of deep tube and 0.6 psi per feet is the gradient of fluid that is there in the deep tube. So which will create a pressure of 12 psi. So the deep tube will have a hydrostatic pressure of 12 psi. Now, as we can see, when only gas was present, then the pressure in deep tube was 16.6. But since along with gas, if oil and condensate also mixed together and it comes into system, then the pressure buildup or the working pressure of MGS reduces to 12 psi. So this is clear that if influx change from gas to oil, gas and condensate, then the buildup pressure will decrease because of drop in percentage of gas and working pressure will also decrease because of decrease in the hydrostatic pressure of deep tube. Now this type of MGS or gas separator is used in well testing. Now we can see the working, we can understand the working of this system. Now oil and gas and other fluid comes into the system. The liquid which is heavier will settle down and the gas is lighter and it is free. It will break out the solution and it will pass through the vent line. And the liquid will pass through liquid seal or deep tube and it will go to shell checker. Now we can understand the pressure buildup or the pressure inside the vessel can be represented by the pressure in the cage. So right now the pressure in the cage is 9 psi that means the buildup pressure in the vessel is 9 psi. Now let us understand how this pressure will change or what dimensions are responsible for the pressure in the cage. Now if I reduce ID of vent line or if I increase length of vent line then we can see that pressure in the gauge will increase. This means that if ID or height of vent line is ID is reduced and height is increased then the buildup pressure will increase. Second factor if I increase or if the flow coming out of the well bore enters into MGS, if the flow is increased, then the percentage of gas will be more, creating more back pressure and more pressure, build up pressure in the MGS. So this means that gauge pressure or build up pressure in the system depends on two factors. One, ID and length of vent line and second, flow rate into MGS. Now let us understand what is the use of mud, hot mud inlet. Now some of the gas separators are fitted with hot mud inlet. So when we should use this hot mud? Now remember one thing, whenever there is an hydrate formation or ice formation in the deep tube, so that can be dissolved only with the hot mud. So from this goose neck or from this hot mud inlet, we pump a heated or hot mud in order to dissolve the hydrate. So one use of this hot mud inlet is to get rid of the hydrate. Second, now suppose if, suppose if I allow gas to pass through this deep tube. 
So what will happen to the working pressure of deep tube? Working pressure of uh, system will decrease. So allowing more gas to enter through this and resulting a further decrease in working pressure of the deep tube. So eventually what will happen? A blow through occurs through the deep tube and gas will enter to shell shaker. So to prevent this effect, what we do is we connect this hot mud inlet to the active system. It is connected to the active system in order to monitor the total volume of system. So if I connect somewhere else, I won't be getting a proper mud or the uh, mud weight of that fluid might not be equal to the kill mud weight. So the hydrostatic head created in this will be very. So in this case, what we do is we connect the hot mud inlet to an active system in order to monitor the returns on surface and monitor the volume on surface.